Hey guys, hope you're having a great day so far. So I just got back from a doctor's appointment. Um, took the wife's van. I dropped her off at work. Now yesterday on her way home, she said check engine light came on. Okay, usually not too concerned. Check engine light comes on. All right. This thing constantly sets gas cap codes. Um, a long time ago, this thing had a blowout in the left rear, and it actually ripped the fuel filler neck out. I was able to put the fuel filler neck back in place, and what happened was the edge of the fuel filler neck is actually slightly damaged. It doesn't leak or anything like that, but if you don't get the cap on just right, this thing will throw a, a, a code for EVAP leak. All right, so I didn't think too much of it. So I'm driving up to the doctor's appointment, lights on the whole way, driving back, I realize the light's not on. Hmm, okay. Could have been an EVAP code. That happens all the time. So I was like, huh, what is it? Okay, so I've showed you this trick before. I'm going to show you again. Uh, this is a 2008 Dodge Grand Caravan. It's now got 222,600 miles on it. Love this van. Absolutely love this van. But I want to show you how you get codes out of it without a code reader, without a scanner, nothing. Let me show you. So, here's the cluster. It's running. You can see it's at, whatever, 600 RPM, 700 RPM. All right, I'm going to shut it off. Now, you're going to take the key, and you're going to bring it on to the on position. So, you're, you're going to do this three times. You're going to go one, two, three. See that? The bar is coming up. Now, will it set any codes? No, it won't. Look at that. It actually cleared itself out. That is quite amazing. Hmm. The code was a PO420. So not the usual EVAP codes. PO420 is a cat efficiency code. I have a code reader in the glove box on this thing. Because this is the one we always bring up to my daughter's house. So whenever I'm up there, it seems I'm always looking at one of my kids' cars up there. You know, for codes or something. So it's just easy to have the little handheld code reader. Let me hook the code reader up. I'm curious to see if it's going to read anything or if it self-cleared everything. Let's find out. So here it is. Here's my little Blue Point EECR1A car scan reader. It's just a code reader. Uh, got this through Snap-on just so I could have something handy, easy for if I don't have my scanner with me. So let's go find the plug down here. I know it's about here somewhere. It's actually right. There we go. Okay. So this thing should self-populate. Now, like I said, it had a PO420. Oops. Darn it. Only problem with this is they don't give you a very long cord. Is this a Dodge? Yes. So I hit the enter. Yeah, see? PO420. It's funny that it didn't show up on the um, cluster code read code one of two and it's a stored code PO420 so let's see what's the other code it could be a PO420 again oops actually I forgot how to use this stupid thing let me back up oh there it is okay yeah so PO420 see it's two of two one of two PO 420. All right, now let me tell you something about this. I don't believe it's an actual CAD issue on this vehicle. The O2s are original, number one. Number two, this thing has an exhaust leak right at the, right before the converter. There's a small, small, small piece of flex section where the converter pipe bolts up to the rear manifold or the right side engine manifold. It's the rear manifold closest to the firewall. The flex piece is actually ha it has a crack in it. It's been cracked for three years. I don't care. You can't hear it. The, the car is running right now. My wife complains of a smell in the morning sometimes, and yes, I have smelled it, and yes, I'm going to get around to fixing it. Um, you can get that coupler piece uh, through Amazon or whatever. I, 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 I don't... I, I don't have it here. I actually have it at the shop. But I did buy one, and I'm planning on putting it in. The problem with this is I replaced the exhaust on this a while back, and the exhaust had rotted towards the back. So what I did was I sectioned off the exhaust, 
and I got a piece of pipe in there, welded it to the rest of the exhaust, and then when I got the replacement exhaust, I just welded everything together. So it's all one piece now. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to actually have to cut the cat off the vehicle, you know, just like I'm a slime bag cutting cats off cars, but I got to cut the cat off, take it completely out, and then replace that flange. The problem is it's got to be clocked. So once I cut the cat after the cat, cut the pipe after the cat, I mean, and I go, that pipe will probably fall right out. I've, I've done it before on some of my other Chrysler products. Um, but basically what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to somehow mark the pipe so I know the orientation. It's a four-bolt flange. I'm going to mark it so I know the orientation of the flange. So this way when I put everything together, because it's not like a straight shot, the pipe comes down, it makes a turn, and there's the cat, then it makes another turn. So I've got to make sure I have it right because if I don't have it right, you know, the thing's going to be off. Either that or i got to cut everything apart, get it hung up in place, mocked up in place, put a couple of tack welds on, take it back down, back apart, and go from there. Either way, I'm going to do it. But I'm actually pretty confident it's not a bad cat. I've never had a cat go bad, ever, in any of my vehicles. Never had a cat go bad. Um, and I attribute that to I am hard on a vehicle. I really am. Whenever I'm driving, I'm almost always foot to the floor. People are always amazed that I drive as fast as I do. I, I, I'll admit it. I drive foot to the floor. I drive as fast as a car will go. When I get in it, this thing will usually get up to 5,500 before it shifts to the next, next gear. That's just how I am. And because of that, 222,000 miles. Original tranny. It, this thing has never let me down. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people complain that the transmissions on these things are garbage. I never had a problem. 222,000. I attribute to the fact that I am aggressive on a car. Any car I own, I drive it foot to the floor. Always have, always will. And that's why my cars last. That's, that's, I, that's my honest opinion. That's why they last. So what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm not worried about the code right now, um, but I just wanted to show you that, that you can cycle the key, get the code to show up on the odometer. Um, but the code is still there in memory, but I can only read it with that little handheld reader. Obviously, my scanner would give me more information. But what I'm going to do is, uh, when I'm well enough at a point where I'm back at the shop, which I will be Monday, I'll make more videos, what I'll do is um, I'll show you what's involved in me fixing that actual exhaust leak, uh, that exhaust leak to fix that PO420 code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace both O2 sensors. 222,000 miles, they're original. Um, I should probably put plugs in this thing, too, because it's been... 120,000 miles since they put plugs in this thing. Uh, problem is, it just it runs so good. It's like, why touch it if it runs so good? And it gets decent gas mileage, all things considered. So, anyway, that's it. Just a little bit of a ramble today. Uh, yeah, so if you're getting something out of my videos, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.